Thus far, all of the differential equations that we have worked with have been in the form dx dt equals f of x. Now the variable names might be different, but having some state variable x and some, let's say, time variable t, that has been what we have looked at. These are special differential equations. These are called autonomous differential equations because of the way that time dependence works. In an autonomous differential equation, the rate of change of the state variable x just depends on x itself, mediated by this right-hand side, f of x. But there are other differential equations, non-autonomous differential equations, in which both dependent and independent variables appear on the right-hand side of the equation. So dx dt equals f of x and t. Now, how do we solve that? Well, in general, we don't. But there is a general case of equations, of separable differential equations, that we can hope to solve using the techniques that we have learned thus far. A separable ODE in its most general form looks like dx dt equals f of x comma t, where that right-hand side splits into a product of a function of x with a function of t. The variables are not mixed together. Let's call that function of x h, that function of t g, and that's it. Our right-hand side is h of x times g of t. Now this equation is separable, so we're going to separate out the two terms, multiplying through by dt, dividing through by h of x, and then integrating both sides. We have on the left the integral of dx divided by h of x, on the right the integral of g of t dt. Do those integrals solve for x as a function of t, and then you're done, hopefully. Let's take a look at an example. Consider the following non-autonomous, separable, ordinary differential equation. dx dt is equal to the square root of x times t. Let's say that x and t are both positive in order to make sense of the right-hand side. This right-hand side, which definitely splits into a function of x times a function of t. Let's do that multiplication, that division. What do we get on the left? We get x to the negative one-half times dx. And on the right, we have t to the positive one-half times dt. Having separated, we can integrate both sides. On the left, the integral of x to the negative one-half dx is x to the positive one-half times 2. On the right-hand side, the integral of t to the one-half dt is t to the three-halves times two-thirds, and then don't forget the plus c. Gotta remember the constant. Let's solve for x as a function of t. How bad is that gonna be? Not bad at all. Square both sides and then divide through by four, and what you're gonna get is x is equal to quantity two-thirds t to the three-halves plus c squared times one-fourth. Now, what is this constant c? Let's rewrite it in terms of the initial condition, x naught. Substitute in t equals zero, and x equals x naught. Solve for c, you will get that c is equal to the square root of four times x naught. That means that our final answer, x is one quarter times quantity, two thirds t to the three halves, plus two times square root of the initial condition, x naught. All of that squared. From which we can now start interpreting the solution, concluding what its asymptotics are. If dx dt equals the square root of x times t, then we can say that x is growing cubically in t, taking that leading order term to be t to the three halves and squaring that. That's kind of cool, that's kind of interesting. I could imagine redoing this example with lots of different right-hand sides, so long as they split. When you're given a nonlinear, ordinary differential equation, you always want to look and see, can I separate it out? Can I put the dt terms over on the right, the dx terms over on the left, separate all the variables out, integrate both sides? If 
we can do that. And if we can integrate both sides, then hopefully the equation is solvable.